Hey, my name's Tim Buell. I'm a drummer living in Nashville, Tennessee, and recently I redid my entire studio. So we're gonna cover what I did start to finish, exactly what I did start to finish. We're gonna cover the cost of it. We're gonna cover why I did it. And then I'm also gonna answer a bunch of questions you all submitted on Instagram. So big picture, I did this remodel because I wanted a room that sounded better. And then I wanted a room that also looked better. I used to have carpet in here. It just, you know, the carpet kind of soaked up everything. It was a really dead sounding room. It wasn't a super pleasing sounding room. And the room didn't really look that Pro. Now this brings up a great question, which Malone Drum asked on Instagram, which is how much did you let look play into the design considering you film content here? This is the first time I've really put some effort into how the room looked. And I wasn't just balancing how it looks on camera. I was more so trying to make this room feel more approachable and feel better when you're here doing sessions with me. So when I say studio remodel, here's what I wanted to do. So with the old space, it had carpet. I didn't like the paint on the walls. The lighting was bad. I bought some new shelves and some new organization to both make it more functional and look better. I took all the panels that I had. I took them down and I either cut them up and made them into new panels or I kind of rewrapped them and now all my acoustic panels on the walls match. I also added a cloud above the drums, which you can't quite see in this frame. There, there was just a lot that needed to happen. So, Gail Diaz Drums asked on Instagram, what are your gear priorities in drum home studio? And this remodel was a big step for me because this is the first time that I've prioritized how stuff looks not just how stuff functions. For the whole history of me having a studio, I just kind of used what I had, made it sound as good as possible, and focused on just getting as good a result as I could with what I had. And then I'd outgrow it a little bit, and then I'd get you know whatever I needed, and then I'd learn that thing, and then get really good at that thing, and just use what I had to the fullest extent. And it wasn't really as much about how it looked or how it felt when you're sitting in the room. It was more so like, does it work and does it make my drum tracks when I'm recording sound better? And it was time to change that. I kind of did things in phases. I did as much as I could um, without having to like move everything out of the studio. So the first thing I did was, you know, I was burnt out on work one day and I just went to the store and bought new shelves. This area right here used to be where the couch is and now the couch is over by the window, really opens up the room. This used to be where the symbols were and there was a little table there and now there's an awesome, cool bookshelf. And those shelves house the drums and pretty much everyone that walks in here now, they look at the shelf and they go, oh man, look at all those drums. And now the drums are out and they're like a featured beautiful thing that everybody can see when they walk in here. So once I got all those new shelves, I went ahead and I started building all the acoustic treatment I needed. Now I got a lot of questions about how to deal with acoustics in the studio, bass traps, acoustic monitors, like all that stuff. And um, Ryan O'Hara drums asked the choices about sound deadening and stuff. And my goal in treating this room was, you know, it's gonna be a totally new space. Now that there's no carpet, it's gonna be way more live in here, which I wanted. So, you know, I don't wanna kill the space. That's why I did this in the first place is to no longer have a super dead room. So I didn't wanna kill the space, but I did wanna treat it so that I could, you know, do the mixing in here that I needed, but more importantly, like track drums. So basically what I did is near the drums, <laughs> It's like really tight. There's treatment on either side behind the drums and then there's a cloud that hangs over the drums. All of that is treatment that kind of tightens up around the drums so that all the close mics in the drums, they're like nice and tight and you know, you can have more flexibility and there's not this like air and kind of crazy frequencies building up in those mics. And then in the rest of the room, I kind of started by just treating as little of the room as possible. And that's kind of where I'm at now. By the desk that I'm sitting next to where I mix, and over by the drum shells, which is kind of like one of the first reflection points for the monitors that sit here that I monitor audio on. I treated that stuff and then I left everything else kind of alone. And there's still a little bit of treating I have to do, but um, I think that's a good starting point. And as far as the construction, there's gonna be a build list of materials in the description with everything that I use. But basically the kind of overview, you build a wood frame, you stick some Owens Corning 703 insulation in it, and then you wrap it in fabric. So basically how I made these is I bought some one by four 
um, one inch by four inch uh, wood and you just cut it up to make a frame. So all this insulation comes in two foot by four foot panels. So you just build a frame that takes into account two foot by four foot. And then I have a little pocket screw kit that um, means that I don't have to screw stuff in on the very corner of it. I just put the pocket screws are actually inside the frame. And um, I just put a little bit of wood glue at every kind of seam point. Then you shove your insulation in to hang it. I just have these little eye hook things that you put a screw in the wall and then it kind of slots down into this little thing here. And then all you do is on the other side where this mounting thing isn't, you just stretch some fabric over it, use a staple gun to staple it all down. So the panels are pretty easy to build. All the panels that I've showed so far, that, that that's like for treating the acoustics of the room. It's not for soundproofing, it's for treating the acoustics of the room to make it more controlled and sound better. But uh, I also wanted to build a box to hide all my cables. You know, in the past, the desk with all the cables, there's like two different computers back there and there's audio monitors and there's a bunch of different, there's just so many cables and I wanted to manage cables as best I could. So I built this box that kind of hides all that stuff. Currently I'm building the box that's gonna go behind my desk to take care of some cable management. So basically what's gonna happen is, what you're seeing here is gonna be wrapped in fabric and all of my cables and stuff will be stashed behind it. So this thing is finally done. Basically, so when you're looking at the desk, that's hiding all the cables, power strips, everything that goes behind the desk. So now that I kind of had the shelves and kind of some of that stuff that was gonna be in the final studio and I had the panels all built, I was having a really hard time wrapping my head around uh, just the fact that I was gonna have to pull everything out of this studio and, you know, start demoing everything. Now, the first thing I did was lighting. Like I said, I used to have a ceiling fan in here. It looked, it was constructor grade. It didn't look good. It didn't give a lot of light. And I honestly never used the fan because it's kind of a big room and the fan didn't do much. So what I wanted to do is take the ceiling fan out and, you know, route lighting throughout the room. These are the lights that I went with. These were like not Philips Hue expensive, but not so cheap on Amazon that maybe they'll set the house on fire. We have on the ceiling here, We've mapped out where all the lights are gonna go, which took forever, because the room is kind of shaped weird and we had to decide like, you're supposed to put the lights 40 inches apart and 48 inches off the wall. So we had to kind of play this game of how we're gonna get 12 lights here spaced out to where it looks good visually, but also effectively distributes light around the room. Lighting, lighting went in. In an effort to make it, you know, vibe shiftable in here, we added dimmers to where we can go like really vibey. Like the lights are still on, but they're warm, they're really, really low. Or we can, you know, light it up. The next thing I did was painting and painting was harder than I thought it would be. Not because painting is harder than you think it's gonna be, it's just, I never painted a room like this. And I, I really hated painting, so I was glad when it was over. Painting is done. I don't like painting at all. That was miserable. By the way, if you're painting, get one of these extendable pole guys here. And the next thing that I had to do was remove the carpet and put in the flooring. There's less carpet now. Sorry for the glasses, but this is dangerous stuff. I, I watched a billion uh, like how to remove your carpet videos and none of them said the things that I'm about to say and they're worth hearing because they're making my life way easier. One. <laughs> Don't start at the corner. Almost every video says like, start at the corner to tear out the carpet. Don't do that. The corner is the hardest part to get out. And I just painted the walls and pulling the carpet out while all the rest of the carpet's still there, it makes it all weird and then it presses against the wall and then it fucks up your new paint job. Don't do that. Start in the middle of the room, take out a strip in the middle of the room and that way when you take out in the corner, you can pull it toward the middle of the room. So that's the first thing. Second thing, um, don't take your, I personally think, don't take your baseboards off. That's insane. That's gonna be so much work. You gotta organize which baseboard goes where. And when you put it back, the baseboard's gonna be lower. So just do quarter round. It makes life way easier. It's like really easy to take up. Don't, don't do that. That scraper thing, this guy, and a rubber mallet, removes staples super easy. And all these things you see people with pliers like pulling out staples, don't do that. Use this scraper and just scrape against the grain of the staples. You know, they'll all be kind of tilted in one direction. You can kind of tell where they're angled. 
scrape against them. And then for removing the tack strip, use this. Everybody's using a pry bar, but you can put this pretty much at either side of the little nails that they use, the brad nails or whatever they are, to put the tack strip in. You can use this to put it under it and then use the, the mallet to pry it up. It's floor day. Steve, say hello to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Okay, so I come to you now from a totally floored in room. We started working yesterday at seven and I worked until six or seven, 12 hours. And then today I started working at six, it's four, 10 hours. For all that was done, it was time to move back in. And again, I was on a deadline. Like I really had to get stuff done. This is my brother-in-law, Dan, and my sister, Laura, and my wife, Miranda, Hello. and they just helped me move in. And now, like most everything is back. We have drums. We have, you guys don't have to be like silent. We have the rack is back. <laughs> the desk is back. The couch is back. Like everything's back. Up until 4 p.m. the day before, I was still like doing stuff to get ready for that. But the day finally came, everything was done. You know, everybody got moved in and uh, we had a full tracking session. I have a hearback system in here now so everybody could dial in their own mixes and it, the footage and the stuff turned out great. So let's talk about the cost and whether it was worth it. So, you know, the project was a lot bigger than I thought. You know, when I budgeted the flooring and everything, like, you know, you they always say this, but it's true. You should always budget more money and more time than you think. So get your budget together, add a little bit of money, and then add a little bit of money on top of that and do the same for time. But, you know, it was totally worth it because that first session I did when everybody came over, like a lot of those musicians have tracked stuff here with me before. And, you know, they walked in and they were just instantly kind of like, whoa, this is like a whole different deal in here now. Um, it sounds better, it looks better, and it was cool when they came over to like instantly have that feedback and kind of know like, oh man, okay, like I did the right thing. So here's the cost breakdown. I'm gonna put on screen, I'm gonna put kind of a spreadsheet that I have. You can also check that out in the description below. But the cost breakdown is, you know, and, and again, there's like, if you've ever done any kind of construction project, you know that whatever the budget is and whatever your receipts are, like there were also like 15 to 20 different little Home Depot trips you took where you spent $7 here and $30 here on whatever that you like can't keep track of because it's just impossible. I like lived at Home Depot for the month and a half I was doing this stuff. And you know, every day uh, was kind of like wake up at 6 a.m., do construction for six hours and then take a shower. And then for the next six hours, you know, do studio stuff and transcriptions and whatever else I was doing. And then I'd like go to bed and do the same thing the next day. So it was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. But it did cost more than I thought. And I did all the labor myself. My dad and I did everything ourselves. So I ended up spending, you know, to do the paint, the floors, the lighting, uh, all the panels and acoustic stuff. Like I ended up spending around $4,000, you know, somewhere between 38 100 to 4200 total. The only labor that I hired was right at the end. I was running out of time and I needed someone to paint the trim, paint the court around and then stain the stairs. Doing the stuff myself, I can't recommend enough like doing as much work as you can yourself if you're going to do a studio build similar to this. The flooring labor alone would have cost $2,800 or more. Pretty much everyone I was calling for this, this room is 500 square feet. Pretty much everyone I was calling in Nashville, it was like 2,500 to above $3,000 just for the labor to install the flooring. Um, it might be different where you are. There's a lot of construction in Nashville. So a lot of companies are just super busy. And for a project of this size, which it wasn't like tiny, but it also wasn't gigantic. They just kind of give you a rate and hope that you'll pay it. So. You know, that saved me three grand right there. That almost would have doubled <laughs> the cost of the project there. You know, having someone install the electrical lighting, uh, that would have been 500, 800 bucks, something like that. You know, building and hanging the panels. I know of companies in town that charge 50 an hour for that. And then painting the room might have been a thousand dollars. I have a buddy that painted a studio recently and the quotes that he got, they were like five grand to paint, just to paint. So, you know, Doing it myself, it was a lot of really long, long days of, again, waking up at 6 a.m., working until noon in construction mode, ripping out carpet, whatever, and then for the next six hours, I'd take a shower and then do like studio stuff um, and like actually work, like play drums and <laughs> program drums and whatever. Um, 
So it was a lot of work, but you know, I saved definitely at least half of what I would have spent doing this myself, you know? And I also think that every time I walk in here, every piece of whatever happened, I can point to it and go like, oh yeah, I remember the day that we did this. And oh yeah, you know, I remember when I had to patch this thing that we did when we were trying to put this light in, like, I don't know. And I, ha I shared all of that with my dad. So if, if we're still living in this house, if I'm still working in this studio, Long after my dad is gone, I'll walk in and go, oh, man, I, I remember doing this with my dad. That's a, that's a really cool thing, and it's a huge privilege. Um, so I, I don't take it for granted, and I'm just lucky that I also have a dad that knows how to do everything. Uh, so he's really, really handy, and I, I could not have done it without his expertise in a lot of this stuff. Um, but I, my suggestion would be do as much of it as yourself as possible. Like you. You might get overwhelmed and you might think that you can't do it, but you can do it. YouTube is a super valuable resource. You can learn almost anything from YouTube. Ask people, there's someone in your neighborhood that's done this before, I promise. My neighbor has installed flooring. If my dad didn't know how to do it, I could ask him and he would have helped. And you know, people, people who DIY stuff at their house, they like to help other people do it because they've been there before. It just takes attention to detail and it takes like maybe trying it out for a second, it not working and you course correcting and figuring it out. And I know it can be really overwhelming, but it's totally worth it to do it yourself and, and, you, and you probably can do it. So was it worth it? Yes, it was totally worth it. This room sounds better, it looks better. And now when clients come in, whether it's producers I'm working with, whether it's an artist that I'm producing, or whether it's a musician that I'm tracking for some project I'm working on or whatever, like this room just feels so much better. I have a hearback system now so I can have people dialing in their own mixes. Like it just feels like a more professional studio both from how it sounds and also how it looks. It's more comfortable, there's more seating, you know, there's more space, it's cleaner, it's, you know, it's it's still just as functional as my old space. It's just, you know, there's no wires that are like hanging out all over the place, kind of bumming people out. Like all that stuff really does matter. And, you know, I avoided it as long as I could. I made this room when it had carpet and ugly walls and bad paint and whatever. I made it sound as good as possible, but it just reached a point where I was realizing that I wanted people to feel better when they were here. I wanted it to feel more pro. I wanted it right when you walked in for you to go, oh man, this is a cool room. I can't wait to make something in here. So that's what we accomplished with this. So it was totally worth it. I'm so glad I did it. I'm so thankful my dad helped. I'm so thankful my wife supported me through the, you know, thir 13, 14, 15 hour days that I was working at some points, but it was totally worth it. And if you want to do this yourself, remember, you can look at the build list that I supplied for the kind of materials you need to build the acoustic panels. And my biggest takeaway would be, you can do it. You can definitely do this stuff. Like, I'm not a rocket science. I'm not like Mr. Handyman. This was something that, you know, it took a long time and it took some screwing up and it took, you know, I thought it was going to be like this, but then it ended up, you know, we had to do it this way but you can do it. And you know, it's really now when I walk in here, I just like can't describe the feeling that I have when I walk in here now and I just go, oh, I, I can't wait to work in here. That's my studio build. That's my journey. If you have questions, put them below in the comments. I'd love to answer as much as I can. And if you like this video, share it with someone, give it a like and you know, subscribe to the channel because I'm making stuff like this and there's going to be a ton of videos of me in this brand new studio that look and sound better than ever. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.